If you are familiar with NASCAR in its current state, you would probably recognize the name Justin Marks, as he is the owner of the new and immediately successful Trackhouse racing team. In 2021, only 39 years old, Marks became one of the youngest Cup Series owners in modern NASCAR, and after just one winless season, the team took off like a rocket ship, with both of its drivers reaching victory lane, and Ross Chastain even creating an instant classic finish at Martinsville and brought to a runner-up finish in the point standings. Although this past season, Trackhouse took a small step back overall, they still picked up three race wins, including one by the debut Mickey New Zealander Shane Van Gisbergen. Between the Hail Melon in 2022 and Van Gisbergen's monstrous upset in 2023, Trackhouse has created the undisputed season highlights of each of the past two years, and they certainly are not going away anytime soon. But what many forget is that before his stint as an owner, Justin Marks had a driving career of his own, and while it wasn't nearly as notable as those of his current drivers, he had some big achievements and even raced in NASCAR for well over a decade. So without any further ado, let's take a look back at the driving career of Trackhouse Racing owner Justin Marks. Before moving to NASCAR's top three divisions, Marks had his early success in sports cars, where in 2004 he came onto the map with four wins, eight podiums, and 13 top tens between the NASCAR Rolex Sports Car Series GT Class and the Speed World Challenge Series. The next year, Marks continued in the Rolex Sports Car Series, driving with teammate Joey Hand to three wins, while also teaming with Bill Oberlin in the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge, where the pair racked up five wins and just nine starts. But later that year, at age 24, Mark shifted his focus from the roads to the ovals and made his ARCA debut in the season finale at Talladega. Yes, you heard that right. The final championship-deciding race in ARCA that year was at Talladega, one of, if not the most unpredictable and destructive track on the schedule. Luckily for the points leader, Frank Himmel, he put together such a dominant season overall that despite a 25th place finish the week before at Salem, he stole the championship on lock over the rookie Joey Miller. Anyway, driving for Dan Shaver, Justin Marks qualified in an impressive 5th place in his first oval start, and hung into the top 15 for much of the afternoon. But unfortunately, while running in 12th with just under 10 laps to go, some sort of mechanical failure slowed his car down significantly, and relegated him to a 21st place finish, multiple laps down. Nevertheless, after showing good potential, and with his road racing accolades to back him up, Marks was signed on with Hickson Motorsports part-time for 2006. The team hadn't won a race before, but given that they finished third in the Illinois State Fairgrounds race just the year before with driver Joe Cooksey, their cars were clearly capable of running up front. However, rather than racing for any wins, most of Marks' races ended up with the car in the junker, as after failing to qualify in their first race together at Nashville, he only made to the finish in one of their five other attempts. That race at Michigan was a solid P10, but other than that, he crashed out three times and suffered a mechanical failure once. A little over halfway through the season, Marks switched over to RAB racing, and at first his results didn't improve much at all, with two crashes and a best finish of 16th in his first four races for them. But in his fifth start for them in the season finale Iowa race, he finally showed that he could contend on an oval, slowly improving throughout the race to go from his 30th place starting spot to finish in third place. While it was a long and miserable road leading up to it, that race was enough to prove to the RAB team that Marks was worthy of a full season, and thanks to both the team's sponsorship from Construct Corps and Marks' own sponsorship from Crocs, it was able to happen come 2007. In his rookie ARCA season, Justin fared respectably with one pole, four top fives, and ten top ten finishes across the 23-race schedule. Though he didn't get a win, he came awfully close on a couple of occasions, such as in Milwaukee, where he led 59 laps late in the going before ultimately getting passed by Frank Kimmel with just two to go and settling for second place. Additionally, he showed clear improvement as the season went on, as while he struggled for speed and crashed out five times earlier on, he went on to end the year with eight straight top five and top ten finishes. In the midst of his late season progression, Marks was also given the opportunity to make his NASCAR Truck Series debut for Germain Racing. Slated to drive in all four of the final races that year, he put together mediocre but consistent finishes in his first three starts, with his best being a P22 at Atlanta. But in the last race at Homestead, Marks had his best performance by far. After narrowly making the show and starting dead last, his race didn't get off to a good start, as on just lap 14, he spun around by himself. Then by the first round of green flag pit stops, it looked like he was going to have yet another lackluster result as he'd only made it up to around 30th and was already trapped one lap down. But in what turned out to be a great strategy called by his team, they decided to stay out as long as they could, and on lap 74, they got lucky when the five of Mike Skinner lost a wheel and forced out the caution. 
at that point. Marks had already gotten back onto the lead lap and was one of only 10 drivers still on it when the yellow flag waved. And since the wave around rule is not in effect yet, only the free pass recipient was able to get back on the lead lap, which would effectively trap most of the field down a lap for the remainder of the race. Thanks to that big break, Marks continued to march up through the order and finish a new best of 8th place. But unfortunately for Mike Skinner, the points leader coming in, his rough night in 35th place finish caused him to lose the title to Ron Hornaday Jr. Anyway, with plenty of sponsorship and four clean truck races under his belt, the Germain Racing team decided to bring Justin Marks on full-time for the 2008 season. Replacing the 2005 series champion Ted Musgrave, Marks would have big shoes to fill in his rookie season. But in the opening race at Daytona, it appeared he was on the path to do so. As after avoiding near disaster while running third with 14 to go, he still recovered to finish in eighth. But the next week at Auto Club would be much more reminiscent of the majority of Justin's season. There, after qualifying a solid seventh place, Marks got arrow loose and spun into the inside wall on just lap five. See him on the inside, the 51 of Kyle Busch pulls out to the just outside and just pulls him around. Sucks Darryl. him right around. I mean, that's the worst feeling in the world. You're a little light off that corner anyway. In the throttle, that truck goes by on the outside. It'll just absolutely suck you right around. Watch this. And into the fence you go. The worst possible time to do that. With Amazing commentary aside, it was not a good rookie year for Justin Marks whatsoever, nor a full one. As following the 19th race at Las Vegas, he was released from his contract and put on the sideline for the rest of the year. Up to that point, his only top 10 finish was from the Daytona race, and other than that, his only notable achievement was winning the pole for the Spring Texas race. But even there, he only led the first lap and drifted back to finish in 14th. Other than that, he finished his miserable rookie campaign with 5 DNFs, 4 of which were crash-related, and an average finish of 21.5. And all the while, his teammate Todd Bodine, the 2006 series champion, won 3 races and finished 3rd in the final points. But even during this rough stretch, Marks was able to make his Nationwide Series debut at Montreal. Driving for Braun Racing, he qualified well, coming in 13th on the boards, but only made it 19 laps in before transmission problems cut his race short. In his only other Nationwide attempt that year, Marks attempted to make the Fall Charlotte race for Germain Racing, but failed to qualify. After showing so much promise towards the end of his ARCA season in 2007, 2008 was a major letdown and surely a confidence killer for Marks. Come 2009, Crocs didn't return to help him as a sponsor, and even with continued support from Construct Corps, Marks was unable to find a full-time ride in any series, and ended up just making four ARCA starts and five nationwide starts. In ARCA, he was at least in good equipment, racing three times for Venturini Motorsports and once for Wintron Racing. But still, he only managed a best finish of 8th at Pocono, and an average finish of 16.8. In his first start of the year in Michigan, Marks was actually well in contention for the win, but after leading 39 laps, he cut his right rear tire with 10 to go and crashed hard into the outside wall. And his nationwide starts all for Braun Racing didn't go much better. In fact, they went much worse. At Montreal, he qualified his series best of 7th, but after falling back outside the top 15 and with 4 laps remaining, he was epically taken out by sliding Stephen Wallace and was unable to get refired, leaving him with a 30th place finish. Justin's best nationwide finish that season of 24th was not that much better though, and it came at Memphis, a race where he spun out and wound up 5 laps off the winner. However, he did score one win in 2009, which came in the GT class of the prestigious Rolex 24 at Daytona. Competing for the racers group along with 4 other co-drivers, his team finished 1 lap ahead of 2nd place, which over the course of 24 hours isn't that big of a margin. But needless to say, Marks was having a rough go in NASCAR, and for 2010, he elected to drop back down to ARCA to continue developing. This time, with full backing from Construct Corps, he signed on with Wintron Racing to run the full season, and after a mediocre 11th place run at Daytona, he finally put all the pieces together in the next race out of Palm Beach. Finally getting an opportunity to showcase his road course expertise behind the wheel of great equipment, Marks went on from his second place starting spot to lead 28 laps and pick up his first career win at long last. But unfortunately for the sake of this video, there is no official footage of the Palm Beach race available right now, so I will not be able to go into much further details about it. Regardless, Marks had a pretty good bounce back season overall, as while he didn't return to victory lane after Palm Beach, he was a consistent front of the pack driver and ended the year 6th in points, with a 1 win, 7 top 5s, and 13 top 10s. Some other notable performances he had that season included at Texas, where he led 39 laps and finished 4th, and in the finale at Rockingham, where he led 25 laps prior to losing the cylinder and finishing back in 16th. 
Also, the New Jersey Motorsports Park, another road course race of which there is no footage. Marks won his alone pole award of the season and dominated in the early stages before getting caught up in some type of crash with Chris Buescher. So after taking a step down and returning to ARCA, Justin didn't set the world on fire, but at least he got his first win and showed that he could put together a consistent and relatively clean full season. Over the offseason, he struck a deal with GoPro and with their funding was able to secure a full-time ride with Turn 1 racing in the truck series. For Marks, it would be his first return to this series since he was released from Germain Racing at the end of 2008, and after having another full year in ARCA to gain oval racing experience, he was more than ready to make his return. But while his rookie teammate Cole Witt ran consistently in the top 10 throughout the first half of the season and even contended for wins on occasion, Marks once again fell short of his expectations as after his first 12 races, he had only recorded two top 10 finishes and held a pretty poor average finish of 21.0. He did win the pole at Texas, but he didn't lead a single lap in that race, or any other race for that matter. And for these reasons, he was let go from Turn 1 Racing following the 12th race at Nashville. Even more telling of his underperformance was that leaving that race, Marks was seated down in 20th in points, while Cole Witt, who again was a rookie, was all the way up in 4th. But still having a sponsorship from GoPro, Marks was able to secure one more race that season, and top equipment too, as he made a one-off in the Thor Sport Racing number 98 truck at Atlanta. But there, he ran in the middle of the pack all night long before facing mechanical problems late in the going and finishing a disappointing 28th place. 2011 was really just a disappointment in general for Justin Marks, as at that point, he had more asphalt oval racing experience than many of his competitors, and he was more or less exposed for underperforming. Especially after returning to ARCA in 2010, there weren't a whole lot of excuses left for him to be falling so short of his teammates while in good equipment. And with no ride lined up for 2012, it appeared that he might be forced to leave the sport, or at least as a driver. But then, after sitting out for the entire 2012 season and most of the way into 2013, Marks returned to NASCAR in a one-off race, in the Cup Series. While he struggled immensely in the ovals, Marks was still a proven talent on the road courses, and so with sponsorship from GoPro, he was hired by Tommy Baldwin Racing to make his Cup Series debut at Sonoma. And honestly, he didn't do half bad as he delivered the underfunded team a solid lead lap 30th place finish. The next year, Turner Scott Motorsports gave him a seat in two Nationwide Series road course races, and he turned some heads in each of them. At Road America, he qualified in 8th and ran consistently inside the top 10 all race along, even cracking the top 5 at one point. However, as the race turned to a matter of fuel saving in the final laps, Marks was the first driver to run empty and stalled out in the middle of the course, dropping him back to finish in 24th. Then in his next race at Mid-Ohio, he ran just as well all day long, qualifying in 6th, and this time getting the finish he deserved, also in 6th. This great performance by Marks in the Nationwide Series seemed to be completely out of nowhere, especially given his lack of recent track time. But actually, the only reason why he hadn't stood out before on the road courses was that he was never given a good opportunity to do so. In ARCA, he always ran up front on them and even won at Palm Beach, but in the Truck Series, there were no road course races at the time. Then in his past Nationwide Series efforts, not only was he driving subpar equipment, but he also faced mechanical failures or was wrecked out in each one of them. Anyway, with these solid runs, putting his name back into conversation as a driver come 2015, Marks was able to strike a deal with sponsor American Born Moonshine to attempt the season opening truck Xfinity and Cup races at Daytona. In his return to Daytona for the first time since 2011, his truck race wasn't a sign of good things to come, as he was hooked hard by the one of Donnie Neuenberger on just lap 14 and was forced to go behind the wall. Then in the Xfinity race, he put down a blistering qualifying lap to line up in second place, but after running in the middle of the pack for most of the race, he became a casualty to a huge crash with 28 laps to go. And as for his Daytona 500 hopes, his car simply had no speed in either qualifying or his dual race, and he would fail to qualify. Following the major disappointment at Daytona, Marks didn't receive any more opportunities on the oval tracks that year, but he did line up three more road course races. The first of them came in the Cup Series at Sonoma, where driving for Front Row Motorsports, he matched his Cup debut from two years prior with a 30th place finish. Then back in the Xfinity Series, he once again ran the Mid-Ohio and Road America races, this time for Chip Ganassi Racing. At Mid-Ohio, he was running solidly in 9th before contact with Ryan Reed forced him to pay for repairs and relegated him to a 15th place finish, but at Road America, he stayed out of trouble and came home in 7th place. 
heading into the 2016 season at 34 years old and still without any major achievements in NASCAR, it would be reasonable to think that Justin's NASCAR career would be limited to road course ringer status going forward, as he could dependently get the most out of his equipment on the road courses, even in the Cup Series, but on the ovals, he had shown little improvement over the years and truthfully wasn't deserving of another opportunity to prove otherwise. But thanks to sponsorship backing from his father's construction company named Katera, Marks put together arguably the biggest deal of his NASCAR career thus far. Partnering back up with Chip Ganassi Racing in the Xfinity Series, he was announced to be splitting the number 42 car with Kyle Larson. This time, there would be no excuses for underperformance, as Marks would have 17 races and winning equipment to finally put the doubters to rest. But throughout the first half of the season, he utterly failed to do so. While Larson took the win at Pocono, led over 100 combined laps in other races, and ran consistently inside the top 5, Marks couldn't even muster up a single top 10 finish. Following the 19th race at Iowa, his best finish was a P11 at Talladega, his average finish was a 21.7, and he had crashed out three times. But returning to a track of familiarity at Mid-Ohio in his next race, everything was finally set to change. Qualifying back in 16th place, Marks and everyone else for that matter were in for a unique and all but guaranteed mess of a race in mid-Ohio as the skies had opened and they had no intent of closing. With all the cars slipping and sliding around, the race was set to be one of survival. To win a race like that, you still need a fast car, but more so, you need to find the perfect line between driving fast and driving cautiously. If you drive too fast, you'll end up like the race leader on lap 10, Owen Kelly, who, driving one of the best cars in the field, the Joe Gibbs Racing number 18, spun around on a downhill section and lost tons of track position. But if you drive too cautiously, you'll end up like the race leader on lap 12, Sam Hornis Jr., who was easily overtaken by the 42 of Justin Marks. For the next 32 laps, Marks continued to perfect his balance between speed and caution, holding the lead the whole time. But after the first round of green flag pit stops, his reign came to an end. The track had dried up significantly and his team had to put the standard slick tires back on, but in doing so, Marks had to get readjusted to a different driving style and lost his advantage over the rest of the field. He soon fell back to fourth place, still showing lots of speed, but not in the dominating fashion that he had before. But his struggles wouldn't last for long, as under a debris caution with 26 laps to go, the rain began pouring down again, just as strong as before, and so the whole field was forced to put the rain tires back on. On the restart, Marks pulled ahead immediately, but as numerous drivers spun out and collided behind him, even Marks was not able to avoid overdriving the conditions this time around, as that same lap, he brought way too much speed into a corner and shot far into a gravel trap, even scraping the tire barriers, but thankfully avoiding any serious damage. Still, with how much carnage was going on between everyone else, Marks only dropped back to 7th on the ensuing restart, and within just a few laps, he was able to retake the lead, simply by running his own race and watching nearly every driver ahead of him go off course. With five laps to go, Marks had already pulled out to an astonishing 18-second lead over second place Ty Dillon, but it would all get reset to zero when the caution flew for TJ Bell, who was stalled off in the grass. After a few agonizing caution laps, Marks fell right back into form at the drop of the green flag and survived the restart without any mistakes. Once again, he pulled into the lead, but throughout the final two laps, another experienced road course racer and Sam Hornish Jr. was still following close behind, ready to pounce if Marks would make a single small mistake. But like before, Marks was threading the line perfectly between speed and caution, and this time, he didn't have to look back until the checkered flag fell in front of him, and he crossed the line in first. For a driver who had gone through as many struggles as Marks had over his relatively long NASCAR career, underperforming or facing bad luck in all of his prior opportunities, I could not imagine what this win must have felt like. He earned it straight up, leading 43 of the 75 laps that day and making hardly any mistakes while driving a stock car and ice skates for multiple hours. But as for the remainder of his 2016 season, that win under the very unique circumstances that it happened was really his only notable finish. In his only other road course start at Road America, he qualified third and ran inside the top five all race long, even challenging for the lead at times. But while running in sixth in the final lap, he was taken out by the 18 of Owen Kelly and got stuck in the gravel pit. And other than that race, Marks never ran up front again and ended the season with only a single top 10, being from his win and a pretty miserable 20.9 place average finish, especially compared to Kyle Larson's 6.1 in the exact same car. After running 17 races and winning equipment that year, Marks did succeed in winning, but also proved once and for all that he was unable to maximize his car on the standard oval tracks. That said, he kept good relations with the Chip Ganassi team and continued to drive for them in the Mid-Ohio and Road America events over the next two years. 
in them. He didn't necessarily contend for any more wins, but he still finished a very respectable fourth place in the 2017 Road America race and had another great run there in 2018 with a P6. But in addition to those two races in 2018, Marks was tabbed to drive the 42 machine in the inaugural Charlotte Roval race. They were on a layout that none of the drivers had ever experienced before. Marks was quick to adapt and hung inside the top 10 all race long. But later on, his car really came to life. After playing a bit of his strategy at the end of the second stage, he restarted in third place and kept it there. Thanks to a mistake by Daniel Hemrick with 10 to go, Marks moved into second, but ultimately he had nothing left for the leader Chase Briscoe and settled for a runner-up finish. Nevertheless, it was still an amazing drive by Marks and one that has really gone forgotten over time. But that wasn't the only notable achievement he had in 2018, as far earlier in the year, not only did he qualify for the Daytona 500, but driving for the notoriously slow Rick Ware racing team, he made it through all the crashes and finished a very impressive 12th place. At the time, it was the best Cup Series finish for the team, and it remained as such until 2020. Also that year, he returned to his roots in sports car racing and ran full-time in the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. Competing for Michael Schenk Racing in the GTD class, he along with co-driver Lawson Ashenbach scored a single podium with a P2 at Belle Isle, and the duel came in ninth in the points. And the next year in 2019, though he scaled back to part-time in the series, he along with co-drivers Mario Farnbacher and Trent Hindman picked up the GTD class win at Watkins Glen. But that would be the only racing he would take part in that year, as following his remarkable Xfinity Series performance at the Charlotte Roval in 2018, and a P27 for Premium Motorsports in the next day's cup race, Justin silently left the sport and didn't return for many more years. In fact, the next time he returned to the track was after he had already founded Trackhouse Racing. That was in the 2022 Truck Series race at Mid-Ohio, where driving the 41 truck for Nice Motorsports, he spent much of the race right around the top 10. But due to a brake failure, he crashed out with 18 laps to go. Then most recently, just this past year, Marks competed for Colleague Racing in the inaugural Chicago Street Course Xfinity Series race, but once again, he succumbed to mechanical issues as his engine expired on just lap 3. I would say it's more than likely that Marks will return to NASCAR in a road course one-off at some point in the future, but at the same time, it is pretty safe to say that after 2018, his main focus has not been on driving in NASCAR. And now, it is time to finally answer once and for all, was Justin Marks really that bad at NASCAR? Well, as an overall driver, yes, to be brutally honest, he was a pretty bad driver in NASCAR. He had plenty of good opportunities and plenty of years of experience in good and even top-level equipment, but yet he never showed consistently good results on oval tracks outside of ARCA. But as a road course ringer, he was not bad at all, and honestly, I would say he was one of the better, more underrated road course ringers out there, especially in the Xfinity series. Even now, I could see him returning to race to any road course for Colleague Racing this coming season and coming out with a top 10 finish, if not better. But yeah, that's all I've got to say. If you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like these. I've been really grinding over my winter break to get out weekly uploads, and I've probably still got two to three more weeks where I can continue weekly uploading, but after that, my schoolwork is just going to ramp up pretty bad again, so I'll continue to let you guys uh, keep you guys updated going forward on what the upload schedule is going to be looking like. But yeah, everything is great for now, and also let me know down in the comments what your opinions are on Justin Marks' NASCAR driving career, was he that bad or not? But yeah, that's all I've got to say for today, so until next time, peace out.